guys. In this video I want to show you how I installed the brake system on my square drop trailer. Now the reason why I decided to install the brakes on this trailer is because I've made some upgrades since I originally registered the trailer. So because of these upgrades the weight of the trailer has now increased over the originally registered limits of 750 kilos. So in order to be compliant, uh, I have to install the brakes and update my registration. So when installing brakes on a trailer like this, you basically have three choices. First one is electrical brakes. For me, they seemed too complicated and a bit of overkill for a trailer like this. Uh, you need to modify your car to have a special electrical outlet that operates the brake and that was just too much. And not necessary for this type of trailer. Second choice is hydraulic and third one is mechanical. Now hydraulic and mechanical are fairly simple to install and reasonably similar but for me mechanical brakes seemed like the best choice. They definitely seem like the easiest type of brake system to install on my trailer. So the kit that I purchased included the following items. So we have our two hubs for the wheels, we have the brake drums we have the wire which is going to operate the brakes, we have all the bearings for the hubs, we have the backing plates to which the brake drums are going to be connected and these plates will go onto the axle like this and be welded at the back. We have a U-bolt to hold the axle in place, we have the pulley system and we have the new super cool coupling with all the relevant bolts and then the brake lever. As you can see I've pulled apart the existing axle, wheels and basically the entire system so I can assemble it all again with a new hubs and brakes in place. I'll need to remove the existing coupling and the coupling the plate that it sits on and install a new plate with a new coupling designed for the brakes. One of the main learnings from our original project was to never use old axle kits from old trailers. This was one of my biggest mistakes and cost me a fair bit of money. So I finally decided to purchase a much better, more heavy duty uh, axle, square axle, solid square axle. Uh, so the only thing I'll need to do is weld these plates to the axle. So we assemble the hub completely and then put it on. So that we can position the back plate and weld it on. First thing we have to do is weld the backing plates to the axle. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube how to install bearings in your hubs but basically with a bigger bearing with an o-ring it goes inside here and then your bearing slots in there and then you have a basically another ring that uh, covers and seals it all up Now it's time to assemble the suspension springs and install axle. So I'm putting the axle in place temporarily. So the next thing I want to do is position the axle so that it's perfectly centered. I'll put the wheels on temporarily and make sure that they're at the exact same position on both sides and then I can weld this little plate at the bottom so that the axle can never move to the left or right. It will always stay perfectly centered. 
So we're about to assemble the hubs. Uh, we want this pulley that's going to engage the brakes to be facing backwards so that when the wire pulls it, it will engage the brakes. I'm using the grease gun to fill the space between inner and outer bearing. The brake pad tension can be adjusted by turning this little pin at the back of the brake drum. If you hear the brakes are quite tight and scraping your uh, hub when it's rotating, you can loosen it slightly by rotating this little pin one way or the other. Before welding the bottom plates to the axle, which keep our springs in place, I verified that fully assembled wheels are equally lined up on each side and equal distance from the center of the trailer. Time to remove the original coupling and the base plate. I'm going to use the rope technique to uh, check that the length from each end of my axle is exactly the same in the center of the coupling so the trailer can be perfectly balanced on the road. Okay, that's pretty accurate. The coupling kit will have to be assembled as per following demonstration. Start off by attaching one end of the wire to one of the wheel brake levers. Then permanently assemble the coupling and don't forget to tighten the bolts properly and then feed the wire to the second drum brake lever. Okay, so I worked out that once I've installed the hubs and I had the brake levers on the bottom, the wire was hanging too low and I didn't like that. So I ended up swapping the hubs, uh, the brake uh, hubs so that the lever is uh, on the top. I also installed a couple of hooks from just a spare chain that I had uh, through which I'm feeding uh, the wire so that it can guide the wire and keep it away from any other components, wheels or suspension. Once you feed the brake wire through this loop, you can adjust the tension of the whole thing by rotating this uh, threaded pin. You'll need to loosen these nuts before you do that. Once you get the desired tension, then just make sure you tighten these uh, bolts. This latch activates the whole brake system when it's open. When the latch is down, the brakes will not engage while driving. If you want to permanently engage the brakes, turn the small side lever around and lock it in. Warning, always rotate small lever towards back while driving. And that's it. Hope you found this video useful and see you next time.